Isn't that what that Dutch angle does? Well, it makes you give makes the feeling uneasy. uneasy, right? Yeah, I'm not trying that's, to get a Dutch no, angle if there is one. That's okay, because this song should make you feel uneasy. <laughs> this, uh, should it? Yeah, I think Tell so. Tell us about this song. <laughs> Tea first. So, yeah, this this song, I read up on it because I got some some vibes off the lyrics when I was learning it, and I was like, hmm, this feels intrusive. Yeah. Like, it felt, uh, it was poetic, but really, the vibe was not romantic at all. It wasn't, it was, I don't know, it's intrusive is the only word well, that I could just come up with. the name of the song's kind of called possession yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. well even before that I've, before i looked it up because i was like what is that what is that song and uh you know how songs kind of come unbidden to your mind and this was one of those and i was looking into the meaning of it and i came across a an interview with sarah mclaughlin and she said that so many people have used this song for their weddings, and she, she just sort of smiles to herself and's like, "Okay, she's you, like, you, not my first choice. <laughs> you, go ahead, then. Good for you." But right. really, the song was based off of, according to her, she had two people who were letter writers to her. They never did anything. They never sent anything other than letters. They never met with her, as far as I could find from the resource material that I was looking at. Um, but they sent her really graphic, intrusive letters, and one of them was more uh, more poetry. It was more, but it was still really intrusive. It was made her uncomfortable, and she wrote this song based off of those two letter writers, like her perspective of their perspective, if mm -hmm. you will. So um, here she was. It's kind of like. Uh, I feel like getting mail. Now, this was back in the 90s, right? This song came out in 93. So getting fan mail, you never know what you're going to get. You mm -hmm. open up and and there could be really lovely things or really just mm, things or uh, more off-color stuff or intrusive material. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so she wrote this song from their perspective or a person obsessed. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that makes more sense. Okay, so this made more sense. But then there was a, it was a sad end to one of them. Uh, he actually started a court case against Sarah McLaughlin saying that she had used his words from his letters to create these lyrics, right? And so he was going to take her to court, but the case never went to court because he committed suicide. Wow. And it was like, oh, my gosh. And so everybody said that... He was a true loner. Yeah. Um, nobody knew that he had passed until his neighbors noticed that his mail was piling up. And that's really tragic to me. That's really sad. Mm. And <clears throat> I wonder at him reaching out to her as somebody who is in the spotlight, who would, if you stop and think about it, she was really unaccessible unattainable <laughs> right yes. so he yeah. it's almost like he was setting himself up for this kind of failure with her or to be to meet a disappointment that he expected to meet right and then ending things and i just find that i find it really tragic and really sad because perhaps he, if he had had somebody in his life to help walk him through some of those things not somebody who was a, a star doing her own thing who had no life connection with him other than his letter writing right that maybe he wouldn't have felt the need to end things for himself and maybe his poetry could have become lyrical content of his own maybe he could have created art from he his needed a, loneliness he needed another person but yeah. then again sometimes I mean you know not to make there's no light being made of a dark thing but a lot of times I mean it kind of speaks to some of the issues he already had right I mean know, and we and do make our choices maybe he's incapable of having some of those relationships because yeah. of the mental some social awkwardness you know, maybe and some mental issues some yeah maybe mental struggles more than anything. well I know we've said it before I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again if anybody out there 
watching this video at any point in time is struggling with thoughts of suicide or you know somebody who's struggling, please call the suicide hotline, 988. Just, just call. Talk to a person. Reach out. Comment on here. We're not on 24-7, but if you're struggling, we're going to do what we can to get you some resources to help you. Like, don't write letters and be creepy alone. Write letters to be well. Like, I, I don't know. It struck me as really sad and just... Indeed. That anybody feels the need to commit suicide. That's just, It's just tragical to me. It's Absolutely. just really sad. But the, this is a beautiful song with a haunting melody. So talking about Sarah McLaughlin, you know, super talented. Holy cow. Like, and, uh, Amazing. I think she's a Canadian. Yes. And just plays guitar really extraordinarily well, plays piano extraordinarily well, sings, sings extraordinarily amazing. well, yeah. writes beautiful songs and haunting melodies. Yep. And, you know, she kind of has it all. And it kind of got me to thinking, you know, it's weird. Um, well, first of all, she's so proficient, you know, and it takes that to make it, you know, in the music industry, of course. And it kind of got me on a different kind of sadness about how in order for people to make it, especially women, in order for them to make it, they not only have to have all those things that I mentioned, like musical prowess and aptitude and all this stuff, but then have to be beautiful to look at as well. And I was like, geez, you know, and I was trying to think of, especially it was weird because in the modern era and you know maybe once in a while the occasional six, exception but it seems like that especially with women and also to some degree with men you know that being easy to look at propels that forward as well you know it's not enough to just be also being young yeah also being young you know if there's you're the ages young and, and beautiful See, like you gotta be young and beautiful yeah. and talented to beyond begin. your years yeah, and then, you know yeah. all this stuff yeah and then sometimes, though, what stinks is that, like, cause I, I follow some forums that are music forums and they're looking for players and this and that. And, you know, even though the guy commented and it doesn't really seem, you know, maybe not the right place to do it, but there was a lot of truth in his statement. And the lady was saying, you know, there was a lady and she was looking for players for her band. It must be under the age of 30, super talented. We want you to be really young and really great. And somebody commented that, you know, that's almost like an oxymoron, like for the most part, unless you're a protege, which is far right. and few between, right. you're not young and great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're older yeah. and great. Yeah. Or you're young and have potential, you know, with the mm -hmm. exception of the child protege or the young protege. You know, and that's not to say that young people can't be really great. Oh, I, absolutely. I think that they can. But we got a in general speaking, of young when you're just looking with us that are really great. When you're yeah. actually like excluding though at his point with more to the fact that you're excluding people, a whole group of people that are probably a lot better on average because they've had a lot more time to practice experience. their craft and experience and yeah. all the things that they can bring to the table and you're automatically dismissing them just because of a number, you know? Well, there are, it's not just because of a number. Like I see a lot of people's points to it because you do, if you've been playing for a long time, especially if you've been playing in a town like our town, Nashville. Yeah. It can jade you if you let it. So sure. that's a, that's one thing. There can be a little bit of a bitter root that's that's just taken hold in some of the people who have been around longer. But also, there's the logistical things to consider. Things come with age that you don't have in youth, like families mm -hmm. and uh, a want to be home mm -hmm. and a physical medical issues that can come up. Whereas when you're like, 18 to 30 a lot of those things you just you feel unstoppable and bulletproof mm -hmm. still in that age range but there's so. also a lot of things that come with age like experience know how wisdom. ability wisdom. absolutely but sometimes Powers. you know especially record labels they don't want that they don't want somebody to be wise they want to be able to pull the wall over yeah. their ass yeah <laughs> you know which is that? treacherous yeah. ground yeah that's so dangerous that but back to sarah you know I think we got into we went through a big period of admiring her music years and years ago yes. and I know that we watched lots of her live concerts yeah. and I think right around the time we were considering trying Early to catch 2000s. her in live yeah. I think she actually retired or took a hiatus from music for quite mm -hmm. a while and I believe that she 
had, you know, started her own family, had children and things like that. And but I've seen that she's Does come she back kids? some since then. I don't know. I know that she took a break, and I thought that was the reason why, but I could be wrong. How lovely to have a little. But also, Sarah's you know, I mean, she's in that Canadian music scene. She has. We found out. I don't know if before or after, like we got into her, but she has another one of our favorite Canadian musicians, yeah. Luke Doucette. Luke Doucette, yeah. Who has a, a great kind of Americana feel to his music, and Love he also music. has another band. We and did I, a shout out. We did a shout out to yeah. his, and we've done another shout out to Sarah's too, to at least one yeah, or two. Yeah, at least one. And and I urge you to check those out if you haven't already. And um, but Luke Desette, we've done a shout out to his, yeah. and he has a great band with his wife called the White Falcon, I believe. Or no, now they're they've changed their name. So it was Luke Desette and the White Falcon, and then. Could be White Horse. I'm not as like, familiar with nature. with the band stuff. The more of yeah, his more solo, solo stuff before yeah. that. Me but too. Although I think his wife did harmonies on on his solo and she stuff. She did. Yeah. Anyway, so. which I actually really enjoy. Yeah. So they're a great like kind of Americana band. He did a band. wonderful cover of Love Cats that I yeah about particularly enjoy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a lot of fun, like a lot of good music around that band. Right. Well, I love. I was I watching those going back to Sarah's like live concert stuff that we watch I was always really impressed with her lady that sings harmony for her she's I mean she's like a Sarah clone from what it oh sounds my like gosh it's it's amazing because <laughs> listening to the music sometimes the uh, and in this song in particular <clears throat> the uh harmonies are it's like they almost take over the melody like that you think that's the main line that's being sung and you have to listen really close to to hear what Sarah's doing because they integrate their vocals. They meld very well lot. and they blend. Like they are the definition like of their a good family. Yeah. yeah. Like they, yeah, they like their family. Blend. And she like I just feel like that woman and I don't know her name, I'm sorry to say, but I feel like she has got to have a beautiful soul, um, kinda like Mike from Tedeschi Trucks, because she her vocal prowess is on par with Sarah's, but she literally stands in the back, almost yeah. in a shadowed yeah. silhouette situation, and supports. That brings up a lot Sarah's of good point, but a lot of times, you know, because to be a front person takes a special quality, you know, it, or like it, if if not a desire to be in the spotlight, at least a tolerance for it, because a lot of people don't want that, you know, and a lot of people. Right. A lot of people are more comfortable in the background, you know, and we've met several that yeah. say, you know, I don't even know if I want to play on stage, and they're great musicians, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And then to that point, though, also that you were making is, I would argue that a lot of times the backup singer has to be as good as the lead singer, if not better, because they can't, they can never take away from what the lead singer They can, have has to support. To they always have to support. And a lot of times they're singing much more difficult lines because in order to put the harmonies in, there's big jumps and wild changes and coming in and out. Also, you know? there there is a tendency to want to drift into melody because it's the main line. There's a reason why it's the the melody is the main bit of the song, right? And the harmony is the background, mm -hmm. the you know, the BGVs. So yeah, I I agree with you that you know, those background vocalists, they need a lot of tout. I know when we do harmonies in our own, in Sugarland Blue, like, we go over and you guys work really hard to, even though you have a male, like, man voice, right? And you work really hard to make your vocals meld with blend, mine the blend yeah, yeah yeah or make the words in the same way that i'm making them it, it's coming natural to me whereas you have to work harder to make this because we want right. for instance the vowel sound to sound the same it's like an overlay i would argue even that like as a background singer that the blend is more important and that there are plenty of singers that have an actual really okay or even great singing voice that are terrible backup singers because yes. they don't know how to blend or yes, mouth. or they and wish to be they heard. Over, over sing, sing past the lead singer. Exactly. Yeah. So stop too late. Stop too loud. You or know, like hang out on the on long. the sibilance of the words. Yeah. Like I know that we've had, like we've talked about it because I'll hear a recording back and the recording's great, but we're all going at the same time and it just sounds like hiss. 
you know, instead of it being the end of a word, Mm -hmm. it just sounds like a hiss. So I'm like, okay, y'all just like take out the plurals you have of to everything. Know where to come in and out and exactly. how, to, how to blend in. It and is out. a separate talent. Where to lighten up and where yeah. to not lighten up. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you need to be able to fade in and out unnoticed. But then at the same time, it's really noticeable if you're not there. Yeah. You know, and it's, yeah. A, it's an art form in and of itself. Yeah. For sure. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Chunk. The cat has taken over. He has. Okay. All right, this is he now... He has declared is, it is an end to the shout-out. Yes. This is no longer a chat, it's a cat. It's a uh, le chat. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. 